My name is Ian Crow and I've been playing stereoscopic 3D video games since about 2012 with my 3D vision system. And one of the first things that I had to learn when I was beginning that process was the fact that a lot of this 3D stuff requires technical, technical ability, technical skill, and the willingness to research and learn things that 2D gamers never have to think about or worry about because of the fact that since 2D gaming is mainstream, of course, all the companies involved aim to make the experience as simple and as streamlined as possible. Now, obviously on PC, there are still issues that come up from time to time and you still have to go into config files and things like that for many games to change settings that you may want to change to customize your experience in the way you want to. But this is on steroids when it comes to 3D and getting things to work and also getting the experience you want out of it. So one unfortunate aspect of the 3D vision system is the fact that there are many things that you can change to improve your experience that are not in the actual NVIDIA control panel and you have to go into the registry to be able to change these. Here is an example of one of those things. Modifying all 3D Vision control key combinations as you need. This is a post on the 3D Vision blog and it tells you the key codes you can use to use any key on your keyboard. And normally you can use the NVIDIA control panel to set most of the options, but for things, there are some things that are hidden. Specifically, save stereo image, which they have highlighted here. You cannot change the stereoscopic screenshot uh, key combination without using the registry. So somebody who may not be technical, maybe comes up with regedit.exe, they navigate to this folder, or not this folder, but this key. They appear as folders, but they're actually keys. And he sees all this stuff, reg D word and 0x and then nonsense codes. And he gets really frustrated with having to deal with things like this, right? Well, I've come up with an application that should hopefully make this easy enough for anybody of any technical ability to deal with. So stereo image type is actually not here, so never mind. Save stereo image. Let's look at that. This is a key that has a value of 0470. What does that mean? Nobody knows. But if you bring up this application here, Advanced 3D Vision Config, you get a nice GUI that allows you to go to Screenshots, take Screenshot, and look at that, 0470. Still nonsense, but over here we can see Alt plus F1 is what that key code represents. So what this application will allow you to do is change many of these registry settings in a much more, uh, I would say, easy to grasp and easy to handle f fashion than having to directly put in hex codes and things like that. So we start out with the main program here. We have four tabs, general, advanced screenshots, and laser sight, and miscellaneous. And the general tab has the basic things that you're pretty much definitely going to want to have access to, like the key code to, or the key combination to toggle 3D on and off, and you may recognize Control T, and the stereo depth itself. And so if you want to get to this page here that I have, you can just click on, click here for key combinations guide. You'll get here and you can see how you can use these key modifiers here, which is going to represent the first two digits of each of these bo text boxes here. So O2 represents O2, just control. Now let's say I want to have Alt and control, then I would change it to 06 or 06. And also this will help you make sure that you're getting valid key codes. So there we have Alt, control, and F5 to, to decrease the convergence. You can also get some helpful tool tips if you hover over each of these labels. Now let's say I don't want that and I don't remember what the default was. 
What I can do is very easily just go click on this button. You get a nice animation and it resets to the default, Control F5. And you got the similar thing here with these uh, hotkeys on the bottom of the advanced page. And then we also have some other things we can uh, enable and disable. 3D Vision Setup Completed is just when you reinstall your drivers or you install them for the first time, you have to go through that setup thing that makes you do the test to make sure that the left eye works, the right eye works, and all that. Well, you can completely skip that if you don't want to do that by just coming into Advanced 3D Vision Configuration and checking this box. And then it won't bother you with that stuff. As far as I know, there's nothing that runs in that setup that you actually need to be able to run 3D Vision properly. Though, I would definitely recommend running it at least the first time that you install 3D Vision on your system because there may be some things that it does the first run that it doesn't necessarily need to do the second one. And the uh, another option to be aware of is 3D mode always enabled requires 3D window mode to be enabled. And so if you disable 3D window mode, then this will disable automatically. Okay. And oh, a monitor size, there is no def known default for this because it depends on the size of the monitor you're currently you have set as your main monitor. And I don't really know how it's calculated. It's supposedly, this value is supposedly two times the uh, vertical uh, diameter or dimensions of your monitor, but I don't understand why I'm getting 38 when this is a 20 seven inch monitor so I don't know what the default is I can't reset the default for you so uh, th but the good thing is that this will be reset on its own in certain circumstances so you can just like re reboot your computer if you forget what the default is and it should be back to normal screenshots tab allows you to switch between JPEGs and PNGs and the main reason you want to switch between JPEG or PNG is not only because PNG is lossless, but also because for some reason, when you're saving image stereoscopic images as JPS, there is a limit of 99. It goes up to 99, and then it will start overwriting uh, from zero. It's, it starts the index at zero, I believe, and then it goes up up to 99 and then it restarts at zero and so you're going to be overwriting your images if you take more than the um, more than the limit at a time you can also click this button to open your stereoscopic directory stereoscopic image directory okay so it does start at one it looks like so this number here keeps increasing up to 99 and when it gets to 100, it just overwrites 1. So you've got to be careful when you're using JPEG. And you can also increase the quality. The default quality is terrible. It's 50, which looks terrible. Get that up to at least 90, I'd recommend, if you're going to be using JPEG. Now, if you use PNS, then you can't set the JPEG quality. This is disabled. But you don't need it because PNS is going to be lossless, and also it goes up to 1,000, I believe. It goes up to 999, I think. And then once you get to 1,000, it starts overriding from 1. So if you're going to be taking on a session of lots of screenshots, use PNS. Um, but if you move screenshots out of this folder, then you should be fine uh, with whatever uh, you're using there in terms of not being we're having to worry about overriding so laser sight tab you can enable and disable the laser sight from here and you can also change the toggle button uh, there there is also in the video control panel the ability to set the laser sight but i i couldn't figure out how to actually do that on my own because there aren't any registry keys here that i can obviously understand how it works like you've got laser sight index that one I understand but 
I don't know how to actually display the particular look of the index or look of each index. So none of this is going to be available in here, but you can just use the NVIDIA control panel. It works well enough. All right, now we're getting to some of the most important settings for me to talk about in this video because they are counterintuitive. So with the swap interleave pattern setting, this is for people that are using, I imagine, 3D TV play, and they need to set the interleave pattern to something other than the default that NVIDIA has. So for some reason, NVIDIA set a default interleave pattern for the left and the right eye on each uh, row of interlaced displays, but they don't let you change it. And this is a problem for people that have things where the opposite pattern is required. So what you can do is you can check this and that swaps the pattern. Now ordinarily this is a very annoying process because there are two registry keys associated with it. I can show you those right here by saving. So this, when you do the save settings, it will tell you all the settings that is going to be saving and the values, the keys and the values. So click OK, save settings. I'm just going to refresh registry here. And so now we have interleave pattern zero and interleave pattern one. And they've got this weird value that they're supposed to be. So this is what the value is supposed to be when it's swapped. But I can also unswap them by doing that. And refreshing. And then the pattern, you, as you can see, has changed to 00FF00FF instead of FF00FF0. All right. Now, the wrinkle that you've got to be concerned with with swap interleave pattern is that there's a particular uh, NVIDIA process that will reset this just randomly. I don't know exactly why or when it resets it, but it will reset it, or it will completely delete both of these keys, or both of these, yeah, both of these keys here, and then you're back to having the default interleave pattern. So when you are using this, you always want to make sure that you use lock registry key. And what this will do is it will prevent the system user from making any changes to this stereo 3D key. It, it's not going to affect any other aspect of the registry, just the stereo 3D key. And so let's take a look at the permissions here. System, as you can see, it has full control and read allowed by default. And I can't change that, but it also has some special permissions here since I've got lock registry key enabled. And let's take a look at that by going to Advanced. And here is the special rule right here. And what it's doing is it's disabling its ability to set values and delete values in this key only. Now, just to show you that it's this program doing that, I'm going to disable the lock, go back to Permissions, and as you can see, those, permission, those special permissions are now gone. So, if you're going to be using this registry lock, make sure that you only use it when you're actually using your 3D interleaves or interlaced display, and then when you're done, come back in the advanced 3D vision configuration, disable the lock, and you don't really have to worry about s disabling this because the stupid computer is going to disable it for you, so you don't have to worry about that. But always leave this lock off when you're not actually using swap interleave pattern. And if you aren't using swap interleave pattern at all, you have no need for it. I, like, I have no need for this. I will never use lock registry key, and neither should you. Okay, so now the last feature of advanced 3D vision configuration down here is profiles. We can save profiles. So let's say I want to make a few changes here. Let's have 3D mode always enabled. And let's change a hotkey or two. And if you use an invalid value, it will always tell you and make sure that you know what's going on. Okay, so control plus none, that's not too useful. 
That's the benefit of having this thing tell me exactly what's going on. All right, so control plus D will decrease the conversions. Okay. So I don't need, let's say I want to create a profile. I don't need to directly save these settings because the profile saving is based on what your current uh, settings are in the UI right now. You don't need to save your settings first. So I can just go to save the profile here. Save it on my desktop. 3D Vision Registry Profile, and it creates an XML file, and you can edit this in, like, Notepad. And all the settings are readable, so it's kind of hard to read, like this in Notepad. Probably prefer to use a program like Notepad++, so you can get the syntax highlighting, and we can see everything we're doing here. So you can manually adjust this. And then you can load the profile. I'm going to load a profile that I already created earlier here. Where I made a bunch of changes. And so I'm going to load this. And as you can see, some things have changed. That changed to left alt. All right. So that allows me to save and load profiles. So when you reinstall or you update your NVIDIA drivers, all this stuff gets reset to default. You can just load a profile and then you're good to go. And of course you need to save these settings. You can see all those settings that has changed to that profile that I just loaded. And the settings have been saved to registry. So I think that's about it for advanced 3D vision configuration. I don't know if I talk about this button. You can open the directory of your screenshots directly just by clicking on it. Okay, so it's a very simple program. Hopefully that gives a good detailed overview of everything going on with it because uh, I don't think I'm really going to be around to answer any questions that should come up. If you want to look at the source code for this. It is an open source project, so you can go to GitHub. Actually, you can go to Helix Mod. You can find my post, Advanced 3D Vision Configuration. I'm going to be updating this as well to include this video. I already have some people that have tried it. And people are saying that it works for them, so hopefully it will work for you. But you just click on this link here, and here's where you can download it from. Just released this current version. Oops. If you go here, you f if you're a developer, you should know what to do from here if you want to keep working on it. All right, so that's going to be it. Hopefully this will make some 3D Vision gamers' lives easier. Also, I want to give credit to Chris of Stereo 3 Productions for this feature. I dedicate this feature and this lock registry feature to him because he's the one that informed me about uh, the swap interleave uh, registry issue. So, thank you to Chris. And my name's Ian Crow, and I hope you all enjoy. I hope I created something useful.